In this video, we'll start out with the emergence of macroeconomics and we'll study how the macroeconomics actually originated. So let's start with the origin and the growth of macroeconomics. The foundation of macroeconomics as a separate branch of economics was laid down by a British economist, John Maynard Keynes in 1936. The process of change in economic thinking that resulted from his work is called the Keynesian Revolution. But revolution against what? What was the old school of thought? Keynes turned it the classical school of thought. He used the term classical to refer to virtually all the economists who had written on macroeconomics before 1930s. So the classical school of thought was actually divided into two sections. The first one is the classical economics and the second one is the neoclassical economics. The first one came the classical economics. Its work was dominated by the work of Adam Smith in 1776, David Ricardo in 1817 and John Stott Mill in 1848. After classical economics, it came the neoclassical economics and its work was dominated by Alfred Marshall in 1920 and A.C. Pigo in 1933. In the preceding videos, we'll study the classical economics, neoclassical economics. But before beginning with all these things, let's study what was actually happening before the classical economics. So what was happening before the classical revolution? Mercantilism. The period was dominated by mercantilism. What is mercantilism? It's an economic theory or practice dominant in Europe in the 16th to 18th century. There were two beliefs in mercantilism. The first one is bullionism. That is the belief that the wealth and the power of a nation is determined by the stock of its precious metals. Say if a country has a huge stock of gold and silver in the economy, then it is considered to be more prosperous as compared to the other nations. And the second belief was the need for state action to direct the development of capitalist system. So how did they actually do? So what the countries were actually doing is that they were securing an excess of exports over imports so that they can earn gold and silver through their foreign trade. Thus, the countries believe that they can increase its prosperity by running a favorable balance of trade. So what is this balance of trade? It is the excess of exports over imports. And in this way, the state action was also necessary to achieve this. It was considered a vital part of this capitalist system. So in the next video, we'll start uh, uh, with the classical economics and we'll proceed further.